December 6, 2020. The Almighty has spoken to me again about prevarication and iniquity. Like this he has let me know, in what does prevarication consist, if not in carrying out the desires of the heart. It has been let me known that this is not fully understood. The prevarication is something that pleases and is caressed, like this is transformed the pleasing into premeditation and what is caressed into treachery. Because, when externalizing what is thought, this entails a planning or, at least, taking advantage of an opportunity to externalize what is desired, what is longed for. At this point of premeditation, the person is confused, nervous, easily the sleep goes away, it is difficult to concentrate and to reason easily of cause and effect. His avenues of his soul are being controlled by his thoughts of self-sufficiency, of self-exaltation, of his longings and desires. Even, when he is knowledgeable of God's parameters, he creates reasoning, in the short, or long, term, to continue with his hidden line of thought. He believes himself to be infallible in his thinking and, although he does not feel comfortable regarding this, he has already taken the first step. And he is not one of those who gives up, because to give up would be to accept the mistake or defeat, and this, a raised and exalted, self, does not conceive it. Here, at this point, the enemy has been working for a while, already, in this life, without being noticed, imperceptibly. Because, a second of prevarication lowers for an hour the guard in our life. One day of prevarication lowers for a week the guard in our lives. And, a week of prevarication lowers our guard for a year in our lives. And so, beloved, through this example, it becomes clear how this, subtly dangerous, gradually weakens our being, and quickly gains ground. With only a number of prevarication that, little by little, is taking root in our DNA, seeking to achieve its end, which is to mutate our human essence. Prevarication, when it is in its early stages, is very difficult to detect, but not impossible. Because, seeing this, the one who has a direct connection with God, can distinguish it by the power of the Holy Spirit that lets him see and know. The prevarication is so deceptive that the bearer, in the first phases of it, does not see it. And, when it advances more, he refuses to see it. And, in these stages even more advanced, he sees it and excuses it. And then he turns away from those who want to help him and classifies them as his enemies. Like this, little by little, he is isolated by the enemy of souls, because, his motto is, divide and conquer. Prevarication is fascinating, attractive and sweet in its next stages. It makes you dream, feel like you are in a cloud of rich emotions. It is very well exemplified by Eve when, knowing that she could not separate from her husband Adam, she ended up at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, forbidden by God for her consumption, since they had a whole garden of varied fruits, and they had no need of this one tree that stood there as proof of their fidelity to God. That is why God declares that there will be no test that is not so strong that we cannot bear it, and with it, the exit. Moreover, Eve isolated herself. She heard her desire, caressed it in the thought. And, with this desire, which she caressed in her thought, she caressed the serpent. She coveted with her eyes this fruit, this was her prevarication. And then she acted. She took the fruit and ate it and became a tempter to her husband and incurred, like this, in treachery. When she arrived to where her husband was, she explained to him with great, subtle joy her discovery that she had not died by taking the forbidden fruit and eating it. That planning of thinking, exposed into words, it was the sin of treachery. Adam realized of the situation. And his thoughts, quickly, reviewed the words of his loving creator. He knew immediately that Eve would die, although she declared otherwise with open excitement. He looked at her, so beautiful, and reviewed his feelings for her. And his senses, wrapped in his feelings, shouted at the reason, I won't be able to live without her, if she has to die, I will suffer the same fate. So, he took of the fruit and ate. Carrying out, like this, the two phases, premeditation and treachery. Through these terrible and malefic things, or steps, the enemy ensnared them, and for this reason, beloved brothers, we are here today in this world of so much pain and misery. A simple act of disobedience, in human sight, 
is to violate the immutable law of God, and this cannot go unpunished. We were created by a holy God, who governs this entire universe by that law, since these heavens and this earth have existed, and the enemy boldly makes us believe that the Eternal will overlook even one apex of violation of his everlasting law. The enemy gives us human reasoning. He leads us, even, to the Bible itself so that we can excuse sin in our lives through it. It is a terrible thing to fall into satanic traps and be under the scrutinizing gaze of the Most High. The self, which tells you, you deserve it, and, do what you want, he had several wives, as many mentioned Jacob. Or they go with more contemporary reasoning, that pastor's wife died and a month later he married another, and that is not a sin, because she died. And they don't want to realize that an act like this already had, long ago, its prelude. Where the enemy sat, with the individual, to plan his next move. Like this creating the sin of infidelity, adultery, in the mind and in the heart, which is prevarication, which, later, is transformed into iniquity. Oh, beloved, what a subtle deception, totally serpentine Jezebelic. Brothers, it is time to walk on your knees before the Eternal, otherwise we will fall. Evil insinuations are, at this time, surrounding the people of God. And he will not give up until he wreaks his havoc, because, certainly, he knows our weaknesses. And he will not hesitate to use them to fulfill his purposes in us, namely, our eternal perdition. Let us live in full alert, day and night. Let us put on the armor of Christ Jesus and take care with great zeal, fear and trembling the avenues of our soul, because, a door ajar at this hour will be deadly. Let us ask the Eternal to guard our avenues, for only then will we be safe. Moreover, one thing is certain, an emboldened, rebellious, contentious spirit will never have the custody of the Eternal. Only a complete humiliation, with a contrite heart, and a clear resolution to continue walking by faith, and not by sight, in the will of God, is our only guarantee of having the custody of the Eternal at our disposal. May the Holy Spirit enlighten us and help us understand how important this is, and how dangerous it is to walk in the path of our own reasoning and human logic. O oh, beloved! I pray for this. May the Lord bless us.